drummer when you need them. <laughs> All right, well this morning you're here on a great day. Just, you know, it just feels good, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel good in here? And uh, Reverend Karen is with us and, and she has got this wonderful talk that she gave a couple of weeks ago on forgiveness. And Karen is, is a counselor and a, and a teacher and a Buddhist and a Unitic, unitic, or what do we call ourselves? Unitites, or I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, she, she is just full of wisdom and knowledge, and uh, why don't you come on up and share with us today? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of share with her just a little bit because we haven't done anything in a couple weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Reverend James. And <clears throat> Thank you, Adam. We live in Fairview, um, right outside of Asheville. Now, honey, we got some catching up to do. <laughs> so, what we're going to talk about again today is, you know, I was here a few weeks ago, and we talked about Ho'oponopono as a path. It's a path for relational healing. And I want to stay with that theme of relational healing um, so many of the times that James and I have talked, and James and Leah and I have talked, we talk about this idea of there's no separate sense of self there's no separate sense of self and that we are all uh, working in the divine presence and how can we how can we heal this ego mind that thinks we're so right I'm like <laughs> yours too huh? yeah okay. but, yeah but we talk about that a lot so we just thought we would bring that forward and talk some more about relational healing, about um, how we can use Ho'oponopono as a, uh, as, a, as a practice every day. Um, I shared a story, and I'll share it again, that in my early 20s, or maybe it was late 20s, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I met uh, Morna Simone, who was um, uh, the woman who came up with the way we have modernized this very, very ancient Hawaiian healing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this. I would do this better. Okay. So no, you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I go, hmm, hmm, mm -hmm. you know, scratch my head. It doesn't really mean anything. Just keep going. <laughs> so what I was talking about was that we, in the, in, back then, in my 20s, we did uh, this, the, the words that are probably very, very familiar to people in unity because Karen Drucker sings it. But it's, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Have, has people heard that and used that at all in their practice and in their daily life? Thank you. And it's, it's a wonderful way to just present yourself in the world and be able to realize the this, this sense of separation. Back then, in my 20s, which, you know, was like 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I had the great privilege of being with her for a weekend, Marana Simone. And she, we went because in this practice, we utilize the idea of not being separate when we realize the idea of being inseparable with the land, inseparable with the divine, yeah. inseparable with our own higher self. And so when we work with that, when I, when I went there with her, we ended up going to one of the coal mines, one mm. of the strip mines in southern West Virginia. Long story, but we did. And I was sobbing. I was screaming. I was like so hateful and angry that somebody would do that to a mountain. And she wasn't. She was as still as the mountain. Mm. And in those moments, it really, I just remember it so vividly that she was able to stay in such peace and equanimity. And she was not separate. 
So it's from that that I've sort of spurred this whole thing with working with the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. When we talk about it, <clears throat> we talk about this is a path, a path that leads us to this non-dual place within ourselves. You've talked a lot about non-duality. Yes. Well, you know, <clears throat> was that a... Uh, a toss? Segway. Yeah. Segway. That's the word I was looking for. I was trying to so, be quiet a minute. Let's uh, talk. <laughs> no, you're doing good. You're doing good. I, I'm, I'm just here to make you look good. Oh, I'm here to, to make Leah look good because I don't <laughs> know how she does this. <laughs> <laughs> so, dualism, non-duality. You know, how many understand what we live in a, in a dualistic world? A world that, you know, as you were talking about judgment, you know, just full of judge. People are so full of judgment. That's right. That's wrong. He's up. He's down. She's good. She's bad. You know, and it, it's it's that duality that keeps us from experiencing our oneness. And so, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is that reconciling energy that gets us back into alignment with our oneness with the mountain, with the land, with the trees, with each other, right? So, so that's why this prayer, this, these four lines are so important. I am so sorry. You know, how many appreciate hearing that from your, from your significant other from time to time, right? Right? I mean, no, we, we have to make amends. And it's because our energy gets, gets turned around. We get crossways with each other. And so there, there has to be a, um, a release of our need to be right. Amen. Need to be right. That one's mine. I love being right. <laughs> Does anybody else love being right? Oh, yeah. Some, somebody said... Being right doesn't always make you happy. Well, it makes me happy. <laughs> but it doesn't really bring a lot of peace in my life, right? Because it, what it does, it solidifies that ego sense of self. That I'm right, because if I'm right, you have to be wrong. So that is this duality that we can address. How can we believe in one thing and... Really believe in it and allow other people and include other people's diverse opinions and diverse ideas. So it's, it's different. It's a different way to approach the world. It's really a healing. It's a healing of, it's a relational healing. That relational healing works with healing ourself, others, and our relationship to the divine and who we are in the divine. In the first steps of the Haponopono prayer, it starts with, I am sorry. Isn't that an amazing thing to say, I am sorry, over and over and over again? Well, the problem that I have with that line okay. is there's a lot of things going on I didn't have anything to do with, and I'm not sorry about it. How did I get in there? <laughs> right? Okay. Do you feel that way sometimes? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's... When you say, I'm sorry, if you take the word literally, it means, you know, I'm a wretch. <laughs> you know? But in this context, how many know it's all about context? Everything is about context, right? There are some things that Leah and I talk about that, are, that have to do with us. If somebody else were to hear it, they'd go, oh, what are you trying to say, you know? Well, we're, we're trying to communicate. How many know we're all doing the best we can? And so saying I'm sorry is, is, has become a form, an apology. You know, it's a divine apology. I am sorry that I stopped seeing your divinity. I'm, I apologize for not seeing who you really are because I know you're a divine being. And I apologize because I wasn't seeing you in your true nature. That's good. I like that. I forgot. I forgot. 
Yeah, yeah. we forget. I, no, I didn't remember sure. to see you and your divine nature. That's a wonderful way to start. <clears throat> In unity, we also use the words conscious, subconscious, and superconscious. And it ties right into this because we're talking also about how do we work with different levels of our consciousness. And in the conscious mind is just that rational part of ourselves that, you know, figures things out, kind of filters this all of the stuff in the environment. And the subconscious is that part of ourselves that contains the memories, mm emotions, kind of drives us. Sometimes when we feel like we lose control, the, the, that subconscious mind is, is really reacting and reacting. We've got to work with bringing the consciousness into harmony and the super subconsciousness and consciousness into harmony. Then we have one more level. That next level, of course, is the super consciousness or divine. When we're able to say, I'm sorry, and then the next line of that is, please forgive me, right? I'm sorry, please forgive me. It allows for us to see that there's some other kind of possibility. We have a different possibility. We can be open to it. Yeah. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Yeah, I love that. You know, forgiveness in the Aramaic language, which is the language that Jesus actually spoke. How many understand that the Bible has been translated in Hebrew and in Greek? But Jesus actually spoke in Aramaic, right? And so when you understand the Aramaic words and what they represent, then you, you get into the culture and, and to what they were really talking about in those days. And so the word forgiveness in Aramaic is the same word for divorce. 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 And you say, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> in other words, you've been joined together with your resentment your bitterness, your anger, your hatred, whatever it is, you've been married to it. You've been joined to it. And so for forgiveness calls us to get a divorce. I want to give you permission this morning to have a divorce <laughs> from your anger. Divorce yourself from your anger. Divorce yourself from your fears. Divorce yourself from all of these feelings and, and beliefs and attitudes so that you can be whole again. To be restored to a state of wholeness and well-being. That is what forgiveness leads to, is wholeness and well-being. Does that make sense? So, get a divorce. It's a divorce without uh, racking up the credit cards? Well... <laughs> It all depends on what kind of uh, activities you've been involved with. <laughs> I'm not allowed to dance on the table yet. Okay. <laughs> but actually, um, I love these quotes by Maya Angelou. Uh, she's an, a wonderful American thinker. Um, she says, forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. I'll do it again. Forgive yourself for not knowing what mm. you didn't know before you learned it. Right? Forgive yourself. If you don't know it, you didn't know it. And you, maybe you'd have done better. Yeah. But you'd done differently. We forgive ourselves. Um, <clears throat> with this act of forgiveness, we align our thoughts. We really align our thoughts and emotions with the divine mind. We're saying, you know... Something's different here. We really, really are saying something's different here. The next lines are, thank you and I love you. So it's, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. Can we do that together? Just think of something in your own mind that, that you would like to shift, a little bit of shift of perspective right now. And we'll say them together. I love you, uh, thank you. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go for it. Please forgive me. Forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love, love you. you. Just take a moment to breathe that in just a little bit. And feel any kind of shift in your mind and your body. We'll do it again. Just kind of be specific. It can be not something the greatest thing in your life, but it could just be something like, I don't know, that person that cut you off in traffic, somebody that you're kind of irritated with. And look at them and hold them in your mind and just say, I am sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. This morning I was out uh, having coffee and our, our uh, wonderful Jim Hall stopped me and he wanted to share a story about how he's been working with Ho'oponopono. And I was really touched. I wanted to cry. I might cry again. So, um, and this is the way that we make our practices our own. And um, he gave me permission to share this and that he had been having a conflict with his sister and they hadn't spoken in three years. And every night before he goes to bed, he holds his sister in his mind. And he changed those words around so that they were real for him. And that's what we have to do. We make these things real for ourselves. And he started out with, I love you. He's acknowledging to his sister, I love you. And he says, I am sorry. He, she, he felt like she had cut the cut the relationship off and it was really her fault but he's willing to say whatever part of this is mine and this is that huge isn't that courageous isn't that amazing to be able to say whatever part of this is mine I acknowledge and own and take responsibility yeah. he says, I love you I'm sorry please forgive me and he ends with gratitude Thank you. And he talked about how important gratitude is. Maya Angelou says, let gratitude be the pillow upon which you kneel to say your night prayer. Mm. Let gratitude be the pillow upon which you kneel to say your night prayer. Jim continued to tell me that his sister lives across the street, and again, they hadn't spoken or acknowledged each other in three years, or she hadn't acknowledged him. He walked out to the mailbox, and there she was walking out to her mailbox. She raised her hand and waved. That's grace. That's divine reconciliation. That is the, the, that's why we're here. That's what we do is to create that healing consciousness and thank you Jim so much for sharing that it's a it's a and in um, psychology Gottman um, uh, he's a, one of the researcher he takes a lot of this stuff out and does really really social science research and he said the beginning of relational healing is the repair it's a waving it's saying hi it's mm. saying here I acknowledge you. I wow. see you. I see you. So that is the way that we can take these practices into our lives for healing. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. You know, healing relationships is something that we're all working on in this world right now. Right? Our relationships with each other need healing. And <clears throat> there's nothing I can do about the other, the person over there that I have the problem with, right? There's nothing, I can't manipulate them to, to be grateful. You need to be grateful. You know, I remember my mother would tell me, you know, you better be thankful that you've got those clothes because I didn't like something, you know. And she's, oh, you better be grateful that you have that. Grateful and you've got food. And even if you don't right. like it. That's right. That's children or other children are starving i know and i always wonder well why don't you give to them me too i know that's my thought but anyway <laughs> 
So relationships need healing. So the only thing you can do is what you can do within yourself. But that's a lot. That's a lot. You can continue to stew and be angry and upset about their political beliefs. Or you could begin to massage and soothe and heal yourself of your expectations and your judgments, right? Because everybody's on their path, right? Everybody's on their path. And we have to just let that be okay sometimes, right? As long as they're not, you know. Anyway, we won't go there. But the, uh, the other thing that you can use this for is also to heal your body. You know, you use this prayer. You know, you put it on that uh, sciatica nerve. You say, I love you. I'm so sorry because I know I did something <laughs> to aggravate you. <laughs> right? And you begin to soothe the energy behind the leg, behind whatever it is that's going on with you. People have done this with cancer. Okay? They've done it with, with you know, having a stroke. I know I went to the hospital one time. This gentleman had a stroke, and, and he was just so upset. And so I didn't know the, this prayer at the time, but I knew enough to, to just begin to soothe and just begin to talk softly and to pray softly and just to be with him until the energy changes, right? And when the energy changes, the flow of the energy starts moving in a positive direction, right? And then he started to heal up, you know? And I just met this guy. And uh, so, you know, I, I said, God bless, and, and I left. And after that, he kept calling me, saying, hey, can you come back and do whatever you did? <laughs> Some more? <laughs> but see, you can do this for yourself. How I many know you need to be good to yourself? You need to love yourself. Love your body, right? Treat it with respect. And that way, when something does happen, or, or maybe even before you get a, a glimpse, ooh, I better take a day off. I better stop. Say it with me. Sometimes we need to stop. Right? Don't we? Sometimes we push too hard. Because once you stop, then the energy gets settled again, and then you can start to move. And that's what this prayer is all about. Thank you. That's beautiful. And in Unity, we talk so much about assuming self-responsibility. How can we be responsible? Really take on responsibility for ourselves and our emotions and that we can change. If we thought it, we can rethink it. We're getting ready to, to close down a little bit and we're going to go into a meditative meditation for today. Yeah, and so uh, I'm going to do a little song to, to get us to retune, to realign ourselves with what's really real. And the name of the song is You Can Relax Now. You can relax now. You have 
had a dream You misunderstood You thought you were separate But now you hear my voice And you can relax now Come on Just take that deep breath, allowing yourself to drop to your heart and feel that you are not separate. Take that deep breath. I am not separate. I am not separate from God. Take that deep breath. And into our heart, we know that this one power and this one presence fills us, surrounds us, is within us. this one presence is filling this entire room the land we stand on at which we call states and countries and oceans is one consciousness we allow ourselves to get big and expansive and flow And if there's that little nagging thought, that little bit of a grudge, that little resentment that's pausing your flow, allow that to come right here. Don't push it away. Come right here. 
and hold it. And just hold that idea and kindness and say, I, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Receive the gift. Receive the abundance. Receive the gift through thank you and gratitude and just receive your innocence. I love you. I am love. I love you. I am love. And feel how lovable you are. Take the deep breath. Feel how lovable, how totally lovable you really are. And with that, and as we come back and take this innocence and lovability and loving out into the world, may we pray that, that all of those who look into our eyes see the reflection of their greatness, see the reflection of their own wholeness, so that we're giving this gift of joy and love and knowledge and knowing out into everything we meet. And may we be strong in that gift. We feel it now. And we say to the divine, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm.